Well, all right, we'll just dive in and get started. Awesome, okay. Um, so Athena Perez, who are you? Tell us about yourself. You know, the way that I found out about you was through CrossFit's interview of you and the mini documentary that they dropped. Um, was it earlier this year or last yeah. year? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. in uh, April. Yeah, and then um, you went on to their podcast and shared more of your story and your journey and um, I mean, one of the reasons why I was telling you earlier, like you've become one of my heroes, is just hearing your story and um, just your radical, incredible ability to say, you know what, I can't change my past. I can't change yesterday, but I can really own and choose today. And I can really take ownership of who I am today and where I want to be tomorrow and the choices that I make today. Um, like it just it's so radical and it's just incredible and you're you're very open and transparent about your story um i and, try <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's it's incredible it's incredible um very much yeah and so like how did how has that been just that journey of owning your story and and choosing you know i want more for my life and where i'm at ah uh. So I want to say it started, um, it, it was a more recent development. So about five years ago, I, um, I was just angry all the time. I know that's hard to believe, but I was, I was not a happy person. And um, mm. it, was a, it was a tough call and it took swallowing a lot of ego, but um, somebody had recommended uh, therapy. So I thought getting a life coach was going to be a good idea. And <laughs> I had one session with the life coach and she said, you know, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I think what you really need is clinical therapy. And I remember when she told me that I was like, what? I don't, I don't need anything. You I'm, know? Not one of, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I'm not I one of those. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit in a, in an office laying on my back, talking to the stars, telling people what my problems are. That's not me. Mm -hmm. But um, I ended up going to the first session. I was like, oh, I'll go check it out. And um, she was a Christian therapist. And um, I think it was just her, her ability to just talk to me. And it was kind of like a conversation that we're having right now. Just, she's like, okay, let's just work it out. And I didn't know what that was gonna mean when we started, but I think it was just her way. And she started stepping me through um, just everything, one thing at a time. And um, that's kind of how it started. So before, before the weight loss ever happened, before CrossFit ever happened, there was some pretty serious, you know, therapy that went on for years. So. So it was diving into that, that layer of your story in your life first before yeah. Kind of yeah. everything felt, followed after Every, that. Everything followed from there. Yeah. And that's amazing to hear that you weren't that happy of a person five years ago because no. you have no idea now like I mean even when we met each other at the, the CrossFit Games you were just so bubbly and full of life and it's like <laughs> oh can we just like hang out for the rest of the night <laughs> man <laughs> no I I'm I'm admittedly I I'm very open and honest about who I was um five years ago and it, it's not that I didn't think that I was a good person I was just I don't think there's any other word I can think of. I was just mad. I was angry. I was mad. I was, um, God wasn't really a part of my everyday life back then. Mm -hmm. And I would come to know that later. Um, but it, it changed me for sure. That's incredible. So who, or who, yeah, who, who was God to you like before and then mm -hmm. throughout that process? Okay. Um, so I would say for the better part of my life, angry is a good word. Um, I thought that God forgot about me and it's not that I didn't know who he was. I always believed in God, but I had trouble with 
Um, I couldn't understand why I would have to go through everything that I went through. I questioned why he would watch it happen. I questioned, you know, if, if I am a child of God, how could you be okay with, with seeing this? Yeah. And yeah, how could something so wonderful and good, and this is what I've heard my whole life, right? God is good. God is wonderful. And, and I thought in my mind, you know what, if this is true, this is really true. Then, then he wouldn't have watched me go through what I did. Mm-hmm. So I struggled with that. And I'm not going to say I didn't want any part of God. I just, I, I wanted to believe that he was real and that, that this was real, but I just struggled. Yeah. And, um, I, through this Christian therapist that I was going to, she, so one of the first things that happened was she introduced this concept of forgiveness. And when she first said that, hey, you're going to have to forgive some people. And when she first told me this, I was like, mm, yeah, that's, that's, that's not going to happen. You know, and she was the one that first told me, you know, you're going to, you're going to have to forgive people that you may not get an answer from. And you're going to have to forgive people that are not sorry. And that you may not get an apology from. And in my mind, I was like, I, how is that even possible? Where do you even start with something like that? You know, you carry this yeah. grit and this hurt around with you for so long. How do you just say, you know what, what you did is okay. And I'm just going to let it go and, and forget that it happened. And clearly I didn't know what forgiveness really meant back then, but <laughs> um, yeah. she introduced this concept of forgiveness. We started working on that. And then she said that you need to work on a, a one-on-one relationship with God. And again, I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. So I started doing all of the things that I thought I was supposed to do. I, I am. Um, so I prayed and I'm like, okay. Um, not sure what this, not sure what I'm going to hear or, you know, I didn't, I didn't know whether the sky was going to open up and a bolt was going to come down from the sky and say, okay, Athena, you're healed. Um, but I just started with a prayer saying, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but you know, I need your help. And the next day, I was going through this drive through at this coffee shop, and <laughs> there was this girl that I knew there, and it was just the weirdest feeling, but I, I'm up to the window, and all of a sudden, I just blurted it out. I don't even know where it came from. I said, hey, uh, I know this is a really weird request, but do you know of a good church? And she was like, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, I know of a church, and you know, you need to come to my church. And so that was kind of the first step for me was going to church. And so I, I started going to church and then within two years I was baptized and I felt like I was doing everything that a good Christian is supposed to do. I was a good person. I'm going to church. What else check, is there? Check, 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 right? You know, what else is there? Yeah. And, um, but in my personal life, I still wasn't, I I still wasn't happy. I didn't feel like, okay, I'm doing all these great things. Why am I not feeling better? Why, you know, everybody says, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to comfort you and you're going to feel loved. And I did not. And I'm like, okay, what, what now? Yeah. So, um, so this journey and how you, found me started because um, Christmas, it was Christmas time of 2016, and I had pretty much reached my max, and I felt like with all the years of therapy that I had done, I had gotten to a point where um, 
I was healthier up here than I had ever been. But the problem that I had is that I looked at where I had to go and the journey that I was going to have to take. And by the time it was all said and done, I knew that, you know, I was going to have to lose close to 300 pounds. And I didn't know, I didn't know how that was going to happen. It was so unfathomable to me to, to cl- have to climb a mountain that high. Um, so I, I guess you can say that everybody reaches that low point and that was mine. And when I say I, I found God, I, I didn't have anywhere else to go. So I, I didn't know what else to do. I was going to do surgery and looking back, you know, I didn't know that the voices I kept hearing in my head and the guidance that I was getting was the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know that at the time. But there was this overwhelming, um, it wasn't like a feeling I was going to die. It was more of a feeling like this is not going to end well. It's not going to end well. It's not going to be good. It was just a bad feeling and I couldn't shake it. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to the voices. Don't know where they're coming from, but I'm going to listen. And, uh, <clears throat> but once I had decided to take surgery off the table, I felt like I was by myself and I'm like, okay, now what? Now I'm scared. And I have nowhere else to go. Christmas was going on and I was at home by myself because I had gotten too big to fly. Now, when I say that, it's not like you can't buy two airline tickets, but the thought of walking from my car to eight, I couldn't. It was too much. So I made the decision to stay home. And I'm crying and it was just a horrible week and I couldn't get on my knees to pray because it was too much work, but I was in the middle of my living room floor and I'm like, okay, I I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to go. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna break it down. And the conversation was not a pretty one. I was mad and I'm, I'm, crying and and screaming at God, talking about, you know, everything that had happened in my life. And I'm like, here I am, you know, what now? Where do I go? What do I do? And uh, I remember falling asleep and uh, I had a dream. And um, the dream was this person that I knew, I wouldn't call him a close friend. He was more of an acquaintance, but he was in my dream. And I, I saw Jim and I remember waking up in the morning thinking, well, that's weird because there was nothing in it. You know, like what kind of gym is this? And I, I remember thinking that. And so I laughed it off. <laughs> well, that was silly. You know, where did that come from? <laughs> You're like, all right, there's so many different layers. Maybe I should be unpacking this. And like, is this my life? Is this like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was supposed to be. I thought it was, you know, sim- a symbol of something. I didn't realize an empty gym, what that was going to mean. Um, but there was no equipment. So I laughed it off thinking, okay, that was silly. Mm. Well, then my conversations with God continued and um, it happened most of the week. And so every night when I'd go to bed, I kept having this dream and it just kept happening over and over and over again. And it was the same thing. It was this person, it was this gym. And by the seventh night, seven days, and that was on January 2nd when I woke up in the morning. And by that time I'd had it so many times that I was like, okay, I feel like, He's trying to tell me something, but I don't know what. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this gym is supposed to mean. I don't know what role this person is supposed to play. Am I supposed to be his friend? What am I supposed to do? But the other thing that happened that morning was I walked into my kitchen and I knew what I needed to do. You know, I, Savant had asked that question, you know, this, this God-inspired diet. Well, yeah, you know, I think it was. 
And um, maybe it's just, some of it's just common sense. Obviously, you know, we all know what good foods are and what bad foods are, but I felt like I was just blessed with this tremendous amount of knowledge that just wasn't there before about what I needed to do and where I needed to go. And I, I, sometimes there, I, there's no other way to explain it other than you just know what you know. Yeah. Like it was there and it was real. And so the kitchen got cleaned out and that's kind of how the journey started. So I, I didn't know, I didn't know what God was telling me about the dreams other than they were very clear um, what was in them. But the only thing I knew was this person. So I felt like, okay, I need to get to know this person. So <laughs> the first thing I did was I, I, I got on Facebook and I start creeping, you know, Facebook and Instagram <laughs> creeping, going, why, why is this person in my dreams? Why, why, is, yeah. why is this person there? And I'm looking at all these pictures and he goes to a CrossFit gym. And I'm looking at all these CrossFit pictures and I'm like, hmm, CrossFit wasn't a thought in my brain at that point. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to be his friend. That's what I need to do. I'm supposed to be his friend. So that's what I started doing. I reached out and started talking to him. And within a month of, of you know, eating well, um, I reached out because there was a coach on his feed that he kept getting tagged in. And I'm like, I'm supposed to work with this coach. I don't know why, but the, I'm going to go that way. Yeah. And um, it's amazing how sometimes you have those feelings. And it's like, I don't have to explain why I just, yeah, what to do. And I just, I just need to do this and follow it and see where it leads. It, it was, yeah, it, I, I couldn't tell you what any of it meant other than I'm just going to follow it, whatever it is. And, um, so I met with her and the day that I met with her, she had invited me to an event at the gym. She said, it's going to be great. There's going to be a lot of people there and um, we're going to have a potluck. Well, that day ended up being the final day of the open of 2017. So that was my first introduction to CrossFit was being at this gym for the open and I walk in the door and I'm sitting in there and I'm looking around and of course I'm looking at everybody doing all these workouts and I'm thinking yeah this is not part of my future but it's fun <laughs> to watch <laughs> and um, and this is all great and everything but I remember someone coming up to me and they looked at me and they're like hey this is going to be you next year and, and I laughed and I was like um no no, it's definitely not, but, but I appreciate that very much. Well, I'm looking around, and um, I look over to my right, and there's this girl sitting there. And I recognized her, but I couldn't figure out where I knew her from. And I get out to my car that night, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, where do I know this person? I don't know anybody on this side of town. You know how you rack your brain, you see somebody and you're like, where do I know that person We from? know each other. I know we know each other. Yeah. I know her from somewhere. And uh, she was one of the faces in my dream. No way. And No way. And I remember once I had made the connection on where I had seen her from, I sat in that car for what felt like an hour bawling my eyes out and and it was like at that moment that I realized like he was showing me what I asked for and this was going to be my life and I felt like I was in the place where I needed to be I had asked for help and I got the confirmation that I needed that it was real and from that moment, I, I promised that I would work on my relationship with him and I would not question the prompts. I was going to listen to everything. And that's, 
here I am. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Like, that is so incredible. Yeah. I, did you feel, like, during, during that, that, that time, did you start feeling God's love? Or was there a moment where you were like, whoa, like, you, you, you've been listening, you've been hearing me, and, and, and you led me to this? And it, like, wasn't an, it wasn't until that night that I felt it. And it was, it was kind of the first time. And again, I don't know if it was that confirmation of seeing something that I, it's a hard feeling to describe. Um, from that point, when I started talking to him, I guess you could say I, I felt peace and I felt supported, you know? Yeah. And I was comfortable. It was just a feeling of knowing. And yeah, it, it's almost like being wrapped in a, in a blanket. And, you know, I call them like those, those, those blankets that you get in those dental chairs, you know, the heavy ones. <laughs> and here, that's kind of what it feels like. You just feel safe. And I guess I just, I stopped questioning what the whys and just felt like, okay, I'm I'm heading in the direction that I'm supposed to be. And I, I guess I just never, it never dawned on me to question anything after that. It was just, I, I know this is where I need to be and he's with me. Yeah. It's amazing. And just surrendering such a huge part of your life over to him. Like our, our physical bodies and that physical aspect of who we are. Like that's huge. It's true. You know, I, you bring up a good point because until all this happened, I didn't even understand what that word was. You know, what does it really mean to surrender? And for me, I, I didn't know what it meant until there was nothing else to do. I, I had no choice but to surrender and I'm trusting in something that I can't see. But, um, but I did. Yeah. I, I, I got to see it. That's so cool. And it's just like our, our bodies and our health. I don't know why or what it is, but for some reason it seems like in a lot of Christian circles, we separate that from our faith. Like our health and our bodies don't have anything to do with our, our relationship with God. And yet they're so intertwined. Like they're just as much a part of our relationship with God because like he made us, he made our bodies too. And like our bodies are also an act of worship, not just what happens on Sunday mornings or in the morning during a quiet time. Like our bodies are also a way to glorify him as well. True. Very true. Um, I was in a, I was in a church service one time. It was shortly after this. And one of the topics that they were talking about was that our, our bodies being a temple. And again, it's these little connections that you make once you start this relationship where things start piecing together, you know, you start making the connection like, wow, why did, why did God bring me to a CrossFit gym? You know, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, but I realized, you know, during this talk, they're talking about your body is a temple and, you know, you need to take care of it. And it wasn't until then that I realized like, wow, you, you know, Athena, what have you done? You know, am I, am I going to be able to stand before God? And when he asked me the question, what have you done with what I have given you? Am I going to be able to answer that question? And um, I'm like, okay, this is, this is all I've got. And I've abused it and I, I thought that I'd wrecked it, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, like this is my, this is my chance. This is my do over. And he's showing me what I need to do to um, not only take care of myself and, and what he gave me, but use it to, to be of service somehow. Yeah. That's amazing. It's, it's just, I mean, it's true. Like this is the vehicle through which we get to live our life. Like 
this is the only vehicle I'm given the only. To, live this, to live this life in. Yeah, like, like this is it. And we spend so much time taking out things on our bodies, I think. You know, mm -hmm. like there's such a strong emotional, physical connection that I think, and spiritual, that I think we underestimate. And how as, as women, you know, we spend so much time in self-loathing or picking ourselves apart and picking yeah. our bodies apart and just like resenting our bodies instead of going like, no, actually, this is a pretty amazing gift. Like this yeah. body with, with its flaws, with its broken pieces, it's, it's my gift. Like it's, it's the gift that God gave me. And am I treating myself with that kind of perspective and that mindset? Do I view myself as a gift? And how I like I change the way that I live or treat my body if I truly believe that this was a gift from God, if I truly believe my body was a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like that's that's an and for me personally, I've been really um walking out and just kind of walking through of going, okay, Lord, like um in my personal journey, how do I, how do I start seeing myself and my value in you and start viewing myself as that gift to this world? And like, I get to live this life and how can I glorify you and um, be a light to others with what you've given me? Um, yeah. And like having that gratitude, like, man, God, like you have given me a good life. Like you have given me a, an amazing place to be and how do I just celebrate that more rather than spending so much time being like oh you should look like this person or you should be like this be like that you know what I mean like it still happens it's, yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> it, it still happens all the time yeah um, but to your point um I think that for for me it was this realization of, wow, this is, this is why we do these things to our bodies and why we turn to, um, it could be any number of things. Obviously for me, it was food, but you know, you try to fill the voids and when you don't have a relationship with your body or God, you're filling all these voids with all of these exterior things. And that's yeah. why I, got where I was and I was filling it because I wasn't, I didn't have a relationship with God. I mean, hands down, that's the reason. And filling that void with, with food and something that made you feel good because you didn't feel good. Well, yeah. You know, like now I would, you know, if I was stressed or, or something was, was bugging me, I would, I would pray about it. That would be my first go-to. I'm like, okay, God, you know, help, help me through this. But there was a time when food would have been that, go to it's a it's a totally different feeling but that's what it is what was what were some of those first moments like when you started making that decision of i'm not going to eat this right now i'm not uh, going to go to this right now um wasn't easy <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> um i I was ready. So I understood what I was getting myself into, but I just didn't realize how hard it was going to be. Cause you're talking about, you're talking about breaking decades of bad habits. And, yeah. um, you know, I had to create all these little games and, um, I had to teach myself just the simple act of being full or not full. Cause I don't think I really ever knew what that was because I ate out of boredom so much that yeah. I don't really ever think I gave myself the opportunity to get hungry. Hmm. So did I really know what that feeling was? So I would, I would talk to God probably 50 times a day and I'm like, help me out here because I would much rather be, you know, tearing open a, a box of pizza right now versus eating these, you know, asparagus because <laughs> <laughs> um, the asparagus does not make me feel very good yeah well, was, but, um, 
You're like, this uh, isn't the fix that I'm wanting, right? No, now. no. This is not the yeah. <laughs> this is not the feeling of enjoyment or pleasure that I'm looking for right now. Like this is no. not the crunch. I don't care about the crunch of a fresh asparagus. <laughs> like I, I would it. much rather <laughs> eat fries. Thank yeah. you. Um Yeah. Uh, I think um I should say it, it was a daily walk. It wasn't one of those things where like if anybody thinks that it was just, oh, I, I just decided one day that I was just gonna stop and I've been strong and brave ever since. That's not exactly how it all came about. Like I was praying every day, all day. I would cry, I would get frustrated. I didn't, I didn't like this new person at first. I didn't like the new, the food. It's not that I didn't like it, it just, it didn't fill that hole. Mm -hmm. um, but as the relationship grew and my trust grew, that's when everything started changing. But that just took time. Not an overnight. Uh, thing. No, no. The heavens, the heavens didn't part. A dove didn't just. No, no. like, Everything's perfect now. And get no, <laughs> no. I still work on it. It's still something that it, it's a daily thing every single day. Yeah. But um, it's a different feeling now because when I, I struggle, I pray and I'm like, okay, I need your help here because I can't do this by myself. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's, it's amazing seeing how honest you are about your story and just that you've been so willing to share that with, with so many people um, and just the platform that God's given you to... Um, meet people where they're at and who may have similar stories or struggles and just like your 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 strength and your courage and your boldness in embracing that and just seeing how God's used it just seriously it just it, it blows me away and just I love how practical you've made the whole process too right like if I mean following your your stories and your Instagram you're like, hey, guys, when you have someone who comes in who's at this size doing these exercises, they're not going to be able to do this. And like, hey, don't don't make an already hard process for them any harder. Like, it's don't true. make don't make their battle with shame that much more intense and show them that, hey, you have you have place here. You have a, a, a spot here like you belong here. And um, just giving them that practical advice of how to love others well is just so cool and then Thank like you. your yeah yeah and like the the tips you have on the zone and like i know this sounds weird or crazy and just your blog and like hey here's how you break it down um i just i think it's it's really awesome and i'm just it's just cool and like your book when i saw you announce that you're writing a book i'm like oh, yes yes i can't wait to read this how's that going by the way uh you know, it's, uh, it's going good. There's, um, it's an editing. It's been the most humbling experience of my life. <laughs> because, um, you know, that's, that's the part where all your work gets sliced and diced and, you know, come back and there'll be all these editing notes. Hey, it, it doesn't need this. And I'm reading the paragraph. I'm like, Oh yes, it does. Totally needs this. Why are you cutting this out? This Why is are you cool. cutting this out? This is the best part of the whole chapter. <laughs> what do you mean we don't need this? So I think it's just, um, it's also putting trust in other people. Yeah. You know, I'm not a. Can you grab that real quick? No. <laughs> um, I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> I was going to take it off the hook. You know, I'm one of those people that still has a landline and I get teased about it all was, the time. You know, I was thinking about it and I was like, no, I'm not going to tease her about it right now because we're talking about something that's like really near and dear and close to her life, but I really want to give her a hard time about that. <laughs> right. I still have a landline so everybody knows you can tease Athena about it. Respect. Respect. Mm. We all have things that we're just still letting go. <laughs> I haven't been able to bring myself to get rid of it because my, my cell phone dies all the time. So that's my backup, you know? See, that's so smart. I have the same issue. <laughs> People are like, I was trying to get a hold of you. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, 
I think that's definitely yeah. my introverted side that's like coming out. Like, well, if I let my phone die, no one can bother me. You know, I, I get like that too, actually. <laughs> um, I keep the, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I could just use my cell phone. It's a funny thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so, so it's in editing. You're in that super vulnerable, super vulnerable place of having them edit your work. And yeah. Uh, and you're, you're a writer like you're an amazing writer so I can imagine that'd be super hard just to have someone know, criticize your work that way that well actually it's 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 interesting that you bring that up because that is not a word that I would have used to describe myself a writer's like I I never even took English class in college you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the most eloquent speaker I <laughs> I have horrible grammar and uh but I, it, it took me a while to, to, to grow into those shoes, you know, like you have a story and yeah, it might come out, um, it might come out raw, but that's what editing and copywriters are for. Yeah, <laughs> so they can yeah. fix all your stuff. <laughs> it's not going to change the story. <laughs> yeah. They're going to make me look really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's awesome. So when should it come out? Uh, I'm hoping this winter, sometime this winter, there's no date yet, but, um, I guess I'm just kind of taking this, um, editing process just one, one day at a time and just letting it be what it is. So when it's perfect, I'll, I'll know when it's ready. Right on. So is it more of an, um, an autobiography or is it? Uh, a how-to for someone that's in similar places that you are? Um, when I decided to write, I didn't exactly know what I was going to write about. So the challenge for me was, do you write a self-help book? And then I felt, I can't write a self-help book because the journey is not over. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's so much. Well, I don't think the journey ever stops. It's going to go on forever. But this, but this I, season, you're still in the middle of this season. of Yeah. Story. I yeah. feel like there's so much more potential for me to learn. And I just don't feel qualified to, to say, hey, this is your outline. Because mine changes all the time right now. It's, mm-hmm. it's, always, it's evolving. But what I did realize is that sometimes just putting your foot forward and being brave enough to take that first step is the hardest part. And I'm like, you know, that's a part that I can write about and that I can say, I've done that. I've been there. These are the things that I had to do to, to take that step and to get myself moving. And this is what I can share. Mm. Like I can do that part. Maybe there'll be a self-help book later, but right now I want to tell people, hey, this is, all of our stories are different, but um, there's a lot of mind work that has to go on to get yourself ready. So the book is called Lifting the Weight, W-A-I-T. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, I've like gone way over the amount of time that I said that we would spend together. <laughs> this has just been so good. Um, is there any, you know, last words or words of encouragement or anything that you would love to share with people who are going to watch this or listen to this? Oh, wow. There's so many. <laughs> um, what What's going to be the most meaningful? I think... Um, I think I would just like to share that I, being strong, being brave, I, I hear all these words all the time. Athena, you're so strong, you're so brave. I, don't I, I give 100% glory to God in all of this. This is not me. I have, you know, someone very incredible on my shoulders. Like, I'm not doing this by myself. And... I don't take any of that credit. I, I had, I put my trust in God and I believed and that takes a while to do, 
for, for some people, but it's okay. And I think if you can get to that point where you just trust and you, and you let those voices or will the Holy Spirit guide you, um, your life can be really incredible. And I've, I've witnessed it. I've seen it. I'm living it. And that's all him. Amen, sister. Amen. Oh, amen. So good. Well, thank you so much. Seriously, this has been amazing and just appreciate you a lot. Well, I, I'm honored that you had me and lots of hugs from here. Yes. Yes. Distant, distant hugs, e-hugs. Well, hey, you have an amazing day and we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Cheers.